Welcome to Best Practices, third grade, time. I am Michaela Guarniello. When you don't know how to read an analog clock, these are confusing times. Have you ever had a student that's felt this way? Try not to fret. We're going to explore ways to make these benchmarks a little less confusing for our students. Students will be expected to tell and write time to the nearest minute with both analog and digital clocks while also appropriately using AM and PM. They will also be working and solving one and two step word problems involving elapsed time. The expectation is to not solve problems that cross between AM and PM. To implement telling time to the minute, students can read scenario cards and use a mini clock to then represent the time to the exact minute. Next, we have to practice elapsed time on a number line using tape. This is great for hands-on. Students will take time cards and put them in order on the number line and then solve one and two step problems involving elapsed time. Keep in mind, all operations can be present in word problems. We will be hitting MTRs 2, 3, 4, and 5 throughout this unit. 2. Demonstrate understanding by representing problems in multiple ways. 3. Complete tasks with mathematical fluency. 4. Engage in discussion that reflects on the mathematical thinking of self and others. And 5. Use patterns and structure to help understand and connect mathematical concepts. Students can use discussion and math chat cards with each other throughout instruction. One question that could be asked, how did the hour hand move in comparison to the minute hand? Students an example of what students can say, the minute hand moves much quicker than the hour hand. This is because the minute hand moves every 60 seconds and the hour hand does not fully move to the next number until the next hour. Also, how do you know whether to subtract or add time intervals? Here we have examples of scenario cards and number lines that correspond. Students can read through and find the actions that are occurring to determine whether they need to add time or take away time throughout the scenario. Teachers will need to ensure students are familiar with appropriate vocabulary. Much of this will sound familiar from previous years. We have AM, analog clock, digital clock, elapsed time, half past, hour, minute, PM, quarter past, quarter two. At the beginning of the unit, students will be working more with telling time to the minute, representing it on analog and digital clocks, and determining AM or PM on these times. You can see there are different events that occur throughout the day where the student will demonstrate their knowledge by drawing the hands on the analog clock or writing on the digital clock, and then writing AM or PM. Finally, this last um, task card shows a student is working with a word problem that is one and two step, and then they use number lines to determine the elapsed time or what time the scenario ends at. Throughout instruction, we can check in with students by asking them questions or have them ask each other questions to have more rich student to student, -to -student discussion. Our first question, how do you determine the hour if the hand is not directly on the number? A possible response could be, the hand will only be directly on a number when the minute hand is on the 12. This shows that the time is on the hour. As time goes on, the hour hand slowly moves to the next hour. I can determine what the hour is by looking at which number comes right before the hour hand. Another question that we can ask students, when thinking about adding and subtracting time, how does the number line help you? A possible response could be that I can move forward or backward depending on the operation I am using to solve. These are two examples of activities students can do at home. One is called analog clocks, where students come up with their own real life scenarios to represent the elapsed time. And the second one, math libs. Students can fill in their own portions of one and two step word problems to then solve. And that's it for this best practices video. I have definitely been a victim of accidentally setting my alarm for PM instead of AM. This could, hey, even be a great example to show how important it is to understand the difference between those two. We'll see you next time.